Namaskar, I'm Harpreet Kaur and I welcome you all to this session. You are watching us on eVidya channel number 8 and also on our YouTube channel NCERT official. जी हाँ इस वक्त क्योंकि आप हमें देख रहे हैं चैनल नंबर एट पे दैट मीन्स कि आज का हमारा जो ये अभी का सेशन है ये हमारे क्लास एट के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए है सब्जेक्ट है साइंस और लेसन नंबर है फोर टॉपिक है मटेरियल्स मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स तो आज हम जानेंगे मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स के बारे में क्या डिफरेंस रहता है मेटल्स में और नॉन मेटल्स में क्या इनकी प्रॉपर्टीज़ होती हैं इसके बारे में आज हम पूरी डिस्कशन uh, करेंगे और uh, अगर आपकी कोई भी क्वेश्चन है तो प्लीज़ हमें कॉल करें हमें ईमेल लिखें हमारे एक्सपर्ट के साथ आप ज़रूर कनेक्ट करें हम आपको बता दें कि आज के हमारे इस सेशन में हमारे साथ हैं हमारी एक्सपर्ट हु हैज़ जॉइंड दिस ऑनलाइन वी हैव विद अस मिस नेहा लहारिया शी इज़ टीजीटी साइंस फ्रॉम एनसीएस मुंबई मैम वेलकम टू द सेशन थैंक यू सो मच मैम ग्रीटिंग्स टू यू एंड आवर ऑडियंस थैंक यू सो मच सो व्यूअर्स हम आपको ये भी बताना चाहेंगे कि आप इस सेशन का हिस्सा बन सकते हैं बाय कॉलिंग अस एंड बाय ईमेलिंग अस आप नोट कर लीजिए हमारा फ़ोन नंबर हमारा फ़ोन नंबर है डबल एट डबल ज़ीरो डबल फोर ज़ीरो डबल फाइव नाइन और ये नंबर आपकी स्क्रीन पर फ्लैश भी हुआ है साथ ही साथ हम आपको ये बता दें कि आप हमें ई भी लिख सकते हैं एंड फॉर दैट और ई मेल इज़ डी टी एच डॉट क्लास एट एट सी आई ई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट इन और इससे पहले कि हम सेशन की शुरुआत करें और अपने बहुत ही इस इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट को समझने की कोशिश करें हम आपके साथ करना चाहेंगे एक छोटी सी अनाउंसमेंट शेयर जो हम सब के लिए बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट है जी हाँ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडियाज जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी We are proud of the fact that India has assumed G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023. A nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all while manifesting the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam. और द वर्ल्ड इज वन फैमिली ऑन दिस ब्यूटिफुल नोट हम शुरुआत करते हैं आज के सेशन की टॉपिक में एक बार आपको फिर बता दूं टॉपिक है मटेरियल्स मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स तो चलिए हम आपको ले चलते हैं सीधा हमारे एक्सपर्ट के पास मैम आज का जो हमारा टॉपिक है बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट है क्लास एट के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए प्लीज़ हमें बताएं कि आज के टॉपिक में हम क्या कुछ सीखने वाले हैं मेरे पास भी कुछ क्वेश्चंस हैं जो मैं आपसे ज़रूर पूछूंगी फिलहाल शुरू करते हैं ये सेशन ओवर टू यू मैम यस मैम थैंक यू सो मच सो टुडे वील बी लर्निंग अबाउट मटीरियल्स एज यू कैन सी फ्रॉम द टॉपिक Materials right. include metals and non-metals. Okay. So all of you must have observed around you what are objects made up of. Mm -hmm. So some objects are made up of specific materials. Like we can see that our wires are made up of copper or silver. And right. And you can see that furniture is not made up of such kind of materials. Furniture yes. is made up of wood. Yes. So you can see that. a particular kind of object is mm. always made up of a similar material so mm -hmm. why are we choosing some materials to build some objects and some materials to build other things mm -hmm. so this is because all the materials around us they have different properties right so broadly based on these physical and chemical properties we can classify materials broadly into two main categories mm -hmm. that is metals and non metals okay. so today we will be looking at their physical properties and how are metals and non metals different from each other and what are their applications in our real life so materials is one topic where it is highly related to our everyday life because right. there are objects all around us we are using objects and mm. we some of us are building objects so we need to know what are the physical properties of these materials yes. so today's uh, lesson will be about these things so okay. these are the properties that we are going to cover today mm -hmm. there are mainly six properties so first one is hardness second okay. is appearance third malleability mm -hmm. then ductility sonority and lastly conduction of heat and electricity right so i know some of these terms might appear new uh, and confusing to our students like malleability ductility sonority these are these are really big words mm. and some of us don't know what it means so don't worry about it when we go one by one 
through these physical properties i'll be explaining about the abilities these properties and how they are different in metals and non metals so we'll be proving together and understanding these properties one by one right ma'am so let's start with metals uh, we'll start with the first property that is hardness okay so first of all i can i am showing you two pictures mm -hmm. of the same object that is a spoon yes now on the left side you can see a silver spoon made mm -hmm. up of silver and the right hand side is showing you a spoon made up of plastic right now the property that we are talking about is hardness so mm -hmm. that means when you apply force on that material mm -hmm. is it breaking easily is it bending easily mm -hmm. or not so all of you must have come across this situation when you all are eating ice cream with yeah. a plastic spoon and the ice cream is a little too cold yes and you're not able to get the desired amount of ice cream on your spoon so you're digging and digging and applying a lot of force and sometimes that spoon breaks yes right so the same thing will not happen with a spoon that is made up of silver so if you try and apply force if you try to bend it or break it it's not mm. going to break easily as compared to a plastic spoon yes right so this means that some materials are very hard and some materials are not hard hmm. so these materials which are hard are metals so metals around us as you can see um, like iron uh, aluminium gold silver they are all very hard in nature and non metals are not that hard now this is very common in science especially chemistry to have some exceptions to every rule right so the general rule that we are talking about is metals are hard and non metals are not hard hmm. but of course we have some exceptions and throughout this class i'll be explaining the property along with the exceptions okay so as important as it is to know about the properties it is also important for us to know these exceptions because they are highly useful in our daily life Gee. so on the left side you can see a picture of a gray silver block so that is a picture of sodium metal mm -hmm. they have taken it in a glass dish and you can see the person wearing gloves is trying to cut it with a knife hmm. and you can see it is easily being able to cut so there are some metals which are exceptions to this rule they are not very hard in fact they are very soft in nature so these are examples such as sodium and potassium and on the other hand you can see a picture of a very nice shiny diamond yes which is a uh, very beautiful yes. so this is an exception to the rule that non metals are not hard because diamonds are extremely hard in nature and all of us know that diamonds are the hardest naturally occurring substances on earth that's so right so that means non metals are not hard but this particular substance diamond has gone to such an extent yes. to be an exception that it has become the hardest substance on earth yes so this is the first property and we conclude by uh, saying that metals are generally hard mm -hmm. and non metals are not very hard okay so this is the fact that i shared with you all hmm. about diamond and the next property is about appearance now okay. if you look around you, uh, you i know you can all classify what are metals and what are non metals and if you look at them and look at the appearance whether they are able to reflect light or not hmm. you see that generally metals are able to reflect light that's why they appear very shiny hmm. and non metals are not good at reflecting light so they appear very dull right so this property of being shiny and being able to reflect most of the light that is falling on the object that property is called as luster yes. so those substances which follow luster which have luster they are called as lustrous right and the materials which do not reflect light which don't appear shiny they are very dull they are called as non lustrous right so you can see in the examples given below we have blocks of gold mm -hmm. and blocks of wood for mm. comparison now you can see the blocks of gold are so shiny they are reflecting light yes. and the surface is extremely smooth whereas blocks of wood are not that shiny they are not reflecting much of the light which is falling on them so that means they are dull right so this is the conclusion that we come to that metals are lustrous and non metals are non lustrous so i think this this word lustrous might be new for our students mm -hmm. so i'd like to repeat what it means again so lustrous materials are those which reflect a lot of light from their surface and they appear very shiny and non lustrous are those materials which don't appear shiny they appear very dull so again let's talk about the exceptions so in metals we have examples of two metals that is lead mm -hmm. and sodium 
So these two are metals, mm -hmm. and even though metals are generally lustrous, these two metals don't follow that rule, okay. and they appear very dull. Okay. So down below you can see the cube of a metal that is lead. I have taken a picture of lead because in the previous one I showed you a picture of sodium. So both these metals are very dull, and you can see that it's not reflecting much of the light. It's not shiny. The surface is not at all lustrous. So on the other hand, you can see on the right side. there are chunks of material which is very shiny so that material is iodine hmm. so iodine and graphite even though they are non metals and non metals follow the property of being non lustrous these two non metals are going the opposite way so they are lustrous in nature they appear shiny as you can see in the picture down below right so concluding this property we can say metals are generally lustrous and non metals are generally non lustrous so you may note that i'm using the word generally again and again because we have examples of exceptions in front of us and we cannot say that this rule is hard and fast all metals follow the same rule that is yes. not true so we say we use the word generally right so the next property is malleability mm. and this word it appears very big and very difficult but um, the meaning of the word is not that tough so malleability is basically the ability to be beaten into thin sheets so whenever you are applying force on an object hmm. and if that object is able to become flat and it right. is able to get converted to a thin sheet because of that continuous beating right if that is happening then the object uh, is called as malleable hmm. so the opposite of that if you apply force on an object and it doesn't get converted to a thin sheet instead it just breaks then that is called as non malleable okay so there are two examples down below aluminum foil gold foil mm -hmm. so both of them are metals aluminum and gold and you can see from the picture that they are indeed malleable that means you are able to easily beat them and convert them into thin sheets right so opposite of this would be an example of say wood hmm. wood is a non metal as we all know so if you take a hammer and if you keep beating it uh continuously with a large amount of force it's not going to become flat into right. a sheet instead it's just going to break into right. pieces so that is what we call as brittle hmm. so materials which are not malleable we can say that they are brittle in nature that means when we are trying to make them into a thin sheet they don't do that instead they just break right so we can say that metals generally they are malleable mm -hmm. and non metals are non malleable so i hope the meaning of this word malleable is now clear to everyone right so again let's look at the exceptions we have zinc and mercury they are metals but they are not malleable so mm. the picture that you see down below that is a picture of zinc metal in the form of granules so you can see that uh, just by looking at the picture you can understand that if you apply force with a hammer it's not going to get converted into a thin sheet instead it's going to break into more and more smaller pieces right so zinc is a metal which is brittle and on the other hand you can see an exception for non metals that is graphite hmm. so even though non metals are generally non malleable graphite is one such non metal which can be converted into a thin sheet and you see that down below the black gray colored sheet that is a sheet of graphite so graphite is an example of non metal which is malleable right so let's conclude this property ma'am i have to interrupt you here because uh, yes. you have mentioned uh, two uh, you know exceptions here mercury and graphite and uh, yes. of course they are exceptions because uh, they are not fulfilling the conditions of being metal or non metal are they having yes. any other special property as well yes they do i'm i'm really happy that you asked this question so if you all are looking at the properties you'll notice that mercury and graphite come again and again in the exceptions right so they are very rebellious they don't follow <laughs> the general rules right. and they have some special properties of themselves as well so mercury ka special property ye hai that mm. at room temperature we see that generally all the metals are solid in nature right but mercury is one such metal which is liquid at room temperature right so if you take uh, at room temperature that is around 25 degrees celsius more or less if you take the metal mercury you will see that it is not solid it's actually liquid and it flows right so that is one special thing about mercury and about and, graphite it and also that has is a why, special property uh, yeah, that I'm, is uh, being I'm sorry, called lubricant i'm interrupting you here 
but I just yes. want to quote this example that probably that's why we are using mercury in thermometers because uh, yes. you can actually check the temperature because of that property. Yes. So the property which is used in thermometer is of course this that mercury is a liquid at room temperature that is the first reason why yes. mercury is used in the thermometer but there is another reason mm -hmm. why we only use mercury yes. so the other reason is that mercury has a very high expansion coefficient so okay. i know this term might be a little confusing to understand so let me break it down a little into a little simpler version sure so whenever we are measuring temperature we want the substance inside the thermometer to react even to a small increase in the temperature. Okay. So even if our body temperature is going from 98.5 to 99, even for that 0.5 degree Celsius, we want degree Fahrenheit, we want yes. the material to expand so that we can take the reading True. easily. True. So mercury has that special property. So even if a small change in temperature is happening, mercury expands a lot. Okay. So that is why we use it in a thermometer. Right ma'am, right ma'am. And you were mentioning something about graphite also. Yes, so enough about mercury. I told you a lot of special things about mercury. Yes. So graphite, on the other hand, it's a non-metal, mm -hmm. but it has a lot of special properties. We will see in the coming slides that it conducts electricity and there is a very special property about graphite. Right. It is a lubricant. Okay. So it is used in industries, it is used in vehicles, mm -hmm. used in ships. So even though it is a non-metal, it is a very useful non-metal. So a lubricant uh, it is used as a lubricant around right. us in a lot of industries. Mm -hmm. So that is a special thing about uh, graphite. Great. Okay. All right. So let's move ahead mm -hmm. to the next property. So I hope malleability is clear to everyone. So ability to be broken or, or to be beaten. I'm so sorry. Beaten into sorry. thin sheets yeah. is called as malleability. And okay. generally metals are malleable and non-metals are non-malleable as a general rule. Okay. So here is another fact for all of us. So I know we know that metals are malleable. So mm -hmm. the most malleable metal around us is gold. And the second most malleable metal is aluminium. So that means gold and aluminium are two metals which can be beaten into extremely thin sheets. Okay. So this was something interesting I wanted to share with all of you as a fact, which is interesting to know. So Let's move on to the next physical property that is ductility. Hmm. Again, I think this word is a little new for our students. So ductility means the ability to be drawn into wires. So whenever hmm. we want to convert any material into a thin wire, mm -hmm. the ability to do that is called as ductility. Okay. So we know that around us, we use a lot of wires in our house uh, yes. for electricity. Right? right. So these wires are generally made up of metals. Mm -hmm. So there are two reasons for it. Of course, because wires conduct electricity. Mm -hmm. And the second is because they are highly ductile. So you okay. can see a picture of a copper metal. It is converted to a copper wire. Uh -huh. So metals can be easily drawn into wires. Non-metals, on the other hand, uh, it's very difficult for us to draw them into wires. So they are generally known as non-ductile. Hmm. So exceptions to these rules we have zinc and mercury again for metals so they are metals but they are not ductile so we saw that zinc was very brittle mm -hmm. it is non-malleable and similarly it is non-ductile if we apply okay. force on it it's just going to break okay. and mercury because it is a so, uh, it is a liquid at room temperature it's very difficult to make wires out of mercury okay non-metals uh, we have an example exception of rubber so we know that rubber is a non-metal hmm. but we have all seen rubber wires around us. We have also seen nylon ropes, yes. plastic ropes. So these are materials which are non-metals, but they are still ductile in nature. Right. So this is the next property, which is sonority. Okay. And that is the ability to produce a ringing sound. So whenever we go to temples, we see hmm. these bells hanging hmm. uh, at the door, at the entrance. And whenever we strike them, they produce a very nice ringing, echoing sound. Right. And if we apply the same amount of force to the door or to the wooden door, we are not able to hear the same ringing sound that we were able to hear in the bell. Right. So we have seen bells in our schools, in our temples. So why these bells are made up of only metals? You must have seen that these bells are never made up of wood or plastic. Yes. And even if they are, they are not useful at all because 
metals have the ability to produce that very pleasant ringing sound mm-hmm. and non metals don't do that so metals are generally sonorous and i'm just going to play this video so that all of us can identify that ringing sound and what a pleasure this sound gives to all the students who hear them <laughs> and then they go for lunch breaks <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm sure it's a very it's, it's the favorite sound for yes. students. That's and the for teachers also. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes, I'm sure. So this sound that you hear, even if uh, you strike it mm. for one second, the sound continues to ring for a few more seconds after the uh, it is being hit. Right. So that is the ability to produce a ringing sound, mm. and this ability which the, the metals follow. So that's why metals are called as sonorous. and non metals are called as non sonorous okay so again exceptions we have mercury and in non metals we don't have any exceptions okay so this time non metals are following the general rule <laughs> and all of them yes. are uh, non sonorous right so uh, if we have time this is the last property that yes. we are going to cover Please. today right yes so it is conduction of heat and electricity mm-hmm. so conduction means the ability to let heat or electricity pass through that material mm. so conduction of heat and conduction of electricity are the two things that we are going to see and these are the four objects that i have put here for examples mm-hmm. so the first one you can see is a utensil and it is made up of iron the pan where the food is being cooked right so what do we use when you go to the kitchen you will see that mostly utensils are made up of metals right so that is because metals are very good conductors of heat hmm. and we want the heat when we switch on the gas we want the heat to come from the flames and then get transferred to our food because we want to cook our food right, right. so that's why utensils are made up of metals because they conduct heat very nicely so the similar example is of an iron a cloth iron so if you see the diagram which i have given at the bottom you right. see that there is a small layer of iron okay. so that is over there so that the heat is getting transferred from that iron to the cloth yes and i think that is why the name iron came because iron is the most commonly used metal to flatten out our clothes right right, right. so the next one is conduction of electricity you can see that picture of wires hmm. and as i mentioned before in this in this class hmm. metals are very good conductors of electricity that hmm. means they let electricity pass through them very easily that's okay. why copper being a metal is the most commonly used wires right. in our houses hmm. so the second thing which i want all of the students or all of us to notice is there are some uh, other materials which are used to make these same object so in okay. the first one you can see the handle is not made up of a metal mm-hmm. it's made up of some plastic material right, right. and you can also go and see in your kitchen that it will never be made of material such as metals that is because when we are cooking the, we want the heat to get transferred to the food not on our hands because right. then it will cause burns in our hands right yes ma'am so uh, i have to in- i have to interrupt you here we're running short of time so very quickly i would request you to kindly wrap up the session that's a very interesting yes. topic that we are discussing but please ma'am let's just uh, wrap it up very quickly yes ma'am sure right. so i'll just talk about the insulation of non metals and we'll be done so we you can see in both the first and second diagrams wherever we want to hold the object we are using right. non metals right that now. is because non metals they are not good conductors of heat and electricity and absolutely. even in the wires you can see they are covering the copper wires absolutely the blue yellow sure. colored material that is a non metal sure so ma'am so that is because we don't want to get electrocuted right. by the cur- electric current right right ma'am so ma'am it's a very have- a very interesting topic and i'm sure we can take it up further in the forthcoming sessions right now we have yes. to wind it up here and we're extremely yes, sorry right. because i had to interrupt but thank you so much for your valuable contribution for all the information that you shared with us with all the students we are really grateful for that and uh, we are glad that you were here and gave us your time thank you so much thank you for having me thank you सो व्यूवर्स ये था हमारा आज के सेशन विच वी हैव टू रैप अप हियर और इससे पहले कि हम इस सेशन का समापन करें बहुत जल्दी हम आपको बताएंगे कि ए सी आर टी की टेक्स्ट बुक्स अवेलेबल हैं हम आपको बताते रहते हैं प्लीज़ आप उन्हें डिफरेंट सेल्स काउंटर से परचेज कर सकते हैं या फिर आप ऑनलाइन ऑर्डर भी प्लेस कर सकते हैं और उनकी पी डी एफ वर्जनस भी डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं टाइम है अब हमारे दूसरे सेशन का जिसमें आप जानेंगे हर्बन्स पजल्स के बारे में जी हाँ ये हमारा अगला सेशन और फिलहाल के लिए मुझे दीजिए इजाज़त नमस्कार